is r times s times t equal to 1. Statement number 1 tells us that r times s is equal to 1. So that r times s times t, if we multiply those two together, they would be 1. 1 times t, which is 1. r times s times t would equal t. But because we're given no constraints on t, t could be any number on the infinity of the number line. It doesn't necessarily have to be 1. It could be 1, but doesn't necessarily have to be. So statement number one by itself is insufficient. Now forget statement number one. Statement number two tells us that s times t equals one. So very similar analysis, r times s times t, again, we'll group the last two. They equal one, so that's r times one, that equals r. Statement number two gives us absolutely no information about the value of r. Again, it could be any number on the infinity of the number line. It could be one, but it doesn't have to be. So Statement number one, statement number two by itself is also insufficient. Now the real crux of this problem is what happens when we combine these two statements? What happens if we know that R times S equals one and S times T equals one? Well, here I'm gonna pick a few numbers and just see what happens. So for example, I could pick R equals one s equals 1, t equals 1, then both of these equations would be satisfied, and then it would be true that r times s times t would equal 1. So that's a choice that would make r times s times t equal to 1. I could also pick r equals 3, and then s would have to be 1 third, so that r times s equals 1. And then for in order for s times t to equal 1, t would have to be 3. But then if I multiply r times s times t, 3 times 1 third times 3, I get 3. And so this is not equal to 1. So it's possible to make choices that allow r times s times t to equal 1. It's also possible to make choices that do not allow r times s times t to equal 1. Therefore, there's no way to decide whether the product equals 1 or not, even with the combined information. So the combined information is insufficient, and the answer is E.